Hi everyone, welcome to part two on how I painted and weathered the Puma Recce vehicle. In today's video, I'll be taking you through uh, more techniques I used. First up is dry brushing. This is a painting style that went out of fashion for a while, but if done subtly, can still help bring out the details on your model. I mainly use oils for this process, although you can use enamels or acrylics, but acrylics can dry the brush out when you're using them. The colours I used to mix for this process, to mix for the Dunkel Girl, are raw umber, yellow orca, Prussian blue and white. Once you've got the colour you want from the mix, Dip a soft brush into the paint, then rub the brush backwards and forwards over some kitchen towel, which helps remove most of the paint, hence dry brushing. When happy with that, lightly brush over any raised detail on the model, and this will help bring out any bolts, hatches, and other uh, areas you're looking for. Now that the hole and the turret were done, I then used what was left on the brush just to lightly uh, go around the tyres and bring out any tread. I also used the mix to pick out the retaining straps on the jerry cans and fire extinguishers, as well as on the rotating periscope housings. Lastly, I used what was left of the paint to add some more colour to the exhausts using a finely pointed brush and some kitchen sponge just to give the appearance that not all the uh, base coat had been burnt away from the heat yet. While the oils were drying, I decided to add a point of interest and add a camouflage net. Taking some Vallejo Pans Racers, British Tank Crew colour, some PVA glue, a drop of water, aftermarket cam net, kitchen towel and an old brush. Poured the paint into the PVA, mixed it around, added a drop of water, added the cam net. Put the cabinet onto the kitchen towel, which removes a lot of the paint and the PVA glue. You don't want it running all over your model. Although the cabinet won't be totally coloured, uh, when you're painting it later, any areas you can't get to will uh, be darkened and won't stand out too much. Add it to the model. Put it where you think the crew might have it, but it's not running off, catching on the road wheels, things like that and the PVA. Use some water to remove any of the paint that does come out, some of the PVA, you don't want it staining. Remove any of the excess runs off with a kitchen towel, uh, leave it overnight to dry and it should be solid uh, in the morning. Now that the oils and the cabinet are dry, it's time to paint the scratches. For these I use the colours Vallejo Buff, Dark Sand, some Pale Sand, some Medium uh, Retarder, there they are out, laid out for mixing, a little bit of water. You can make the colours like fainter by adding more water. So when you paint them on, the, the scratches look very light or you can make them a bit heavier so the scratches look um, darker as it were. Here I'm painting around the hubcaps where the stones might chip up and uh, mark the paintwork. So you can notice that uh, the tyres have been worn away if I've been handling it, but I'll do all that later. I'm uh, adding chips around the stowage locker. I like to add quite a few chips and scratches to my models to make it look like they have been worn. Just take your time, it is a quite a slow process. I'm now adding more chips to the, the rear deck engine access panels. Take the scratches lightly, build them up, don't go overboard. Notice the uh, exhaust where I used the oils previously, just dabbing it on how they, uh, they've dried quite flat now and they give that a good effect of the paint not all being burnt away. Here I'm adding a, a slightly different tone of the mix, just vary the colours of the scratches, like some lighter, some slightly darker, just to give a look of age. And here's the rear deck uh, finished with all the light scratches now. Next up is the crew hatches on the turret. Take your time, build the scratches up slowly and then getting heavier as you go. A good way to add scratches underneath the vehicle is to use a sponge technique as I am here. Don't forget to add scratches to the jerry cans and some of the straps. 
that's all the light scratches done on the vehicle. I just wanted to add a little bit more paint onto the exhaust. So I used the same colors again, but this time I added a bit of World War II German beige as well, just dotting it onto the exhausts. And finally, using German grey and London grey, I added some light scratches to the grey jerry can, mixing uh, these greys with the light scratches mixed from earlier, before we go on to the dark scratches. The paint I use for these are Vallejo's Burnt Umber, German Can Brown and some Retarder. As for the light scratches, build these up. Not all of the uh, light scratches need a little bit of dark in there. It's just to show like the steel underneath. Build it up as I said, take your time. Here I'm adding a scratch along the side of the turret as if it's rubbed along something as it's turning. I went quite heavy with the dark scratches around the turret's crew access hatches as I wanted the paint to be worn away by the crew's hobnail boots getting in and out. Now it's time for the dark runs and stains running down the side of the vehicle. Used sepia oil paint, raw rumber oil paint and mix them together or on their own. Dot them around the side of the turret or the side of the vehicle where you want the dirt runs to go. With the aid of some enamel thinner, dampen a flat brush, remove some on the kitchen towel and drag it down and upwards as well for where the, uh, the runs are going to go. Once it's dry here you can see on the turret the effect of the runs. Next up was to paint the convoy lights. First off I used Tamiya Silver to paint the, the back of the light. Then over this I used Tamiya Clear Green, which I then painted over the silver. I also used the green on the periscopes and the gunner sight on the top of the turret. Next was the cam net. I painted it Panzer Aces British Tank Crew. Once dry, I gave it a wash with olive green and burnt umber oil paint, which was thinned with enamel thinners. Any over paint can be cleaned off with some clear thinners. While the wash was drying on the cam net, I then painted the wooden handles on the Pioneer tools. The colours I used were Vallejo's Iraqi sand and pale sand, varying the tones as I applied them. To paint the metal parts of the tools, I used Vallejo German Grey. Then to add more wear, I added some pale sand. Mix this with the original colour, also thinned with some water. And added layer after layer, getting lighter as I did so. To paint the handles of the wire cutters, uh, which were made of a Baker-like material, I used Vallejo Flat Brown. To add the wood effect to the Pioneer tools, I now use MIG Dark Brown and some Sienna Oil Paint. To start with, I add the darker shade around the clasps, just to add a full shadow. Then blend it out, adding a little bit of sienna as I did so. To give the appearance of even more wear, I used a soft dry brush and just run it over the handles, just remove uh, some of the paint there. Then using another soft brush, just blend in the edges. To give the appearance of wear to the Bakelite handles, I used yellow orca and white oil paints. Mix these together, add it to the handles and then blended them in with a soft brush. To give the appearance of light rust to the tools, I added some enamel thinner to the sienna, made a wash, 
on the tape and then just blended it onto the surfaces. It was time to pick out more detail on the cam net. The colours I used were light dust from the Wilder range along with some olive green oil paint. I then used the dry brushing technique as shown in the first video to pick out the texture on the net. Note the dirt run stains on the bonnet which were painted on earlier. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. It's free. Cheerio for now.